We played this last spring because everybody was creaming their jeans over it, I think for good reason. T-Pain, I guess, was tired of people suggesting he couldn't sing and needed... He's an incredible singer. Yeah, very, very good singer. Last, about a year ago, he did uh, an album of covers. It's called um, On Top of the Covers. And he did some Sam Cooke. He did Journey on there. It was a lot of R&B, but he closed it with Black Sabbath War Pigs. And everybody was like, that's a really, really good version. We played it last spring for a little bit. And um, Ozzy Osbourne has said uh, he was bummed out that T-Pain didn't call him. He said that um, T-Pain's cover of War Pigs is the best one he's ever heard. And, uh, of course, T-Pain couldn't be happier at that. But he's like, why didn't you guys call me? T-Pain, whose real name is Fahim Rashid Najim, uh, actually has a really good voice. But people most closely associate him with the auto-tuning because early on you never heard him do anything without the auto-tuning. And uh, so mixed in with the journey in the Sam Cooke and the Frank Sinatra was uh, Black Sabbath's War Pigs. And that was the one that everybody paid attention to because it was so kind of you know, counterintuitive to what people thought that he would be into. Far and away, that was the song on that album that got the most streams. And uh, Ozzy said that that is the best cover of War Pigs he's ever heard. He tweeted, why didn't you guys call me? Ozzy, who is in the throes of Parkinson's disease, by the way, still says, with all the comments about him retiring, um, you know, when you've been doing it that long, you don't really want to sit around on your ass. And so he he's always kind of going back and forth. Sharon has intimated that they might get OzFest up and running again. Um, and supposedly there's a new Ozzy album that's going to drop before the end of this year. So, you know, even if you don't go out on the road, people clamoring to hear what Ozzy's still doing. But you don't want to sit around, really. I guess you want to do it while you can. And some days are probably better than others. There's probably full-on days where he's like, I don't ever want to go out on the road again. And then other days you probably feel okay. And you're like, well, maybe so. Who knows? But the vote of confidence, again, you know, a year after the album came out, I don't know if Ozzy had never heard it before. I had to think that he had because people would have sent it to him. But he said that uh, a lot of people have covered that song. Mostly rock bands. That's probably what gives it the extra oomph. A guy like T-Pain, but uh, five minutes from now, I'll have another $1,000 for you. Those keywords come at about 30 past, but about 13 of them uh, every day for you to grab a grand from the buzzard bookie. You know, sometimes um, something in pop culture will be universally loved, and invariably there'll be a backlash. It's just a natural reaction to something. I think that maybe the better order there is something that's universally reviled, because then if you let that go a little bit, then you'll see people come to its defense. That might be the better way to go. When you have Steve Martin on your side, you're having a pretty good day. Uh, Steve Martin uh, came out and said, everybody needs to get off Joe Coy because that's a really, really hard job, hosting one of those shows. And people don't realize, even for funny people, how difficult it is. You know, And a handful of people have come out and said, Joe Coy is one of the best stand-up comics out there right now. And so for a lot of people, if that if the Golden Globes was their first exposure to him, that's a bad representation of what Joe Coy can do. And Steve Martin, I mean, he's on Mount Olympus. What I don't understand is the way people are acting like when he did the Barbie joke and he's like, Barbie based on a plastic doll with big boobies, and they're like, how dare you minimize the Barbie movie? to just, He's like, no, that's what it's based on. It's... Like, it, he didn't say that's all it is, but it is all it's it is. based on the Barbie doll. Yeah, but the Barbie doll never had big boobs. I didn't understand that joke just on its face. What are you talking about? The, 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 the Barbie doll? The original Barbie doll, 
they always talked about how if that that was an actual woman's proportions, it'd be insane. Insane. Well, that was just because the waist was like the size of a toothpick, not because the doll had giant boobs. If you look mm. at a Barbie doll, it doesn't have like giant boobs, right? No, the original Barbies, I mean, proportionally to her body, had giant boobs. Okay, they, they've that's what he's talking it. about. They've changed it over the years, but okay. there was definitely- Because now they're just like little points. That's probably maybe over the years You're of them trying to- skip her. Well, <laughs> my daughter has a, bar, has a couple yeah. of Barbies. Uh, that's all I know. The key moment in Barbie is when she goes from perfect beauty to bad breath, cellulite, and flat feet, or what casting directors call character actor. <laughs> Yo, I got the gig 10 days ago. You want a perfect monologue? Yo, shut up. I like that joke. Oh, that's not the big booby joke. That's not the big booby joke. Because even Greta Gerwig, who directed Barbie, she was like, she kind of took the high road. She was like, yeah, well, you know. Um, I forget what she said, but, you know, she didn't slag the guy. Big boobies. I thought I had it. But anyway, everybody's heard it by now, but. And there's also, it, it wasn't in front of a global audience like the Golden Globes, but there's the a clip going around now of John Mulaney's monologue for the Governor's Ball Awards. And, of course, John Mulaney murders. And it's a different, uh, you know, it's not being tev- televised, so maybe that's a little bit different for him. But anyway, Steve Martin said, hey, lay off Joe Coy because he's a funny dude. And he's like, it's very, very difficult to host those shows. Not for the squeamish, he said, because he and he hosted the Oscars, I think, he and Martin Short. And he said, I'm still throwing up from the last time I did it. Oh, he hosted with Alec Baldwin almost 15 years ago, but he had hosted a couple of times before that. And, you know, when they, I think the reason they keep asking Jimmy Kimmel to host the Oscars is because he knows a lot of those people. And they're okay getting ribbed by him. They've been on his show. He's kind of, that show has been on a long time. Jimmy Kimmel's show has been on 20 years. And he's ingratiated himself with a lot of those people, whereas a lot of people are like, I don't know who Joe Coy is. And so he kind of swings in there and tries to do it. But hosting is a lot different than performing, like Bill said, in front of a crowd who came to see you. So you can fully, under, for all the people that are like, why even do it? You can fully understand why if they come to you. Huge exposure. And, yeah. yeah. Do you, hey, you want to host an award? You go, yeah, okay. But he said, I'd be lying if I said it didn't hurt. <laughs> the the backlash. Because they had him on like next day, mm-hmm. right? He was doing Good Morning America. He's like, yeah, I'm a comic. I do arenas. But hosting something like that, that's a completely different thing. But uh, Steve Martin, when he comes to your defense, you're in pretty good shape. I got money for you. It's $1,000. It's a chance to grab some cash from the buzzard bookie. Listen closely. I hope you win. This is your chance to bet with the buzzard bookie and win $1,000 now. Enter this nationwide keyword at WMMS.com. Bank. That's bank. Enter it now at WMMS.com. Mm-hmm. Um, Subway sandwiches. Subway chain has been added to a list of war sponsors, according to the country of Ukraine. You know, they're mad at any American company or multinational corporation that's still doing business in Russia. And in the first days of the Ukraine invasion, you saw all of these companies say, we're pulling out of Russia. We're not doing anything. And a lot of them stayed out, but a lot of them kind of quietly went back in. But if you have brick-and-mortar locations of stores, you're probably not going to shut them down. And Subway still operates a lot of stores in Russia. But I think the headline of Subway sandwich chain being a war sponsor uh, is kind of funny. Because obviously nobody would consider them to be that. I mean, the country of Ukraine has different... Priorities and concerns, but uh, there are more than 500 Subway restaurants in Russia. And, you know, I don't know if they still are. They might have been um, uh, leapfrogged by Chick-fil-A, but for a while, Subway was the number one franchise in the world. There were more Subway locations. I mean, it became a meme like Starbucks, you know, like because Subway 
unlike other franchises, they don't have as many restrictions. You know, there's a subway around the corner from us here, and there's literally one a few blocks away. Because they're like, look, if there's an empty retail space and you want to put, you want to pay to put a subway in it, we'll let you do it. I'm sure there's probably some minimum distance, but it ain't much. So, you know, if you remember the photo of the Starbucks in Houston, Texas, that was across the street from another Starbucks, that's kind of what people were um, comparing Subway to. The, but uh, Ukraine considers Subway Sandwich uh, Company now uh, a war sponsor. And there are a lot of companies that haven't pulled out of Russia. Pepsi still operates in Russia. And uh, so, listen, if you're somebody... Just because it's not on the front page anymore doesn't mean that people aren't paying attention to what's going on there. That might mean something to people. That might mean that you go to a, I don't know, if you like sandwiches, you might want to look into what people are doing. You might opt instead to go to Blimpy. I wish. (laughs) Like me some Blimpy. Man, there used to be a Blimpy right in Berea. There's still one in Ohio City, I think. I've only had one in my life at the airport in... What was it, Dallas-Fort Worth Airport? Yeah. There aren't as many as there used to be. But you can get on that Blimpy store locator. It'll tell you. Closest Blimpy is in Detroit. Detroit. Oh, so they must have closed the one. It used to be one across the street from the Nestle in Ohio City. They're still making them. You can still go on the map, and there'll be a coming soon. So they're like, hey, we should put a Blimpy there. Where's the coming soon? Dayton, Ohio. Beaver Creek. Envision a world in which our own dick from Dayton decides, retirement's not for me. I thought that after 25 years at Lowe's, I would enjoy sitting around playing my poorly tuned mandolin. And he decides he wants to get back into the part-time employment game. And you walk into a blimpy. And he's there making your sandwich. A guy in Florida threw a Subway sandwich at the woman working there. He whipped it right at her face. Why? Because she was rude to him? No. Because she gave him the wrong change? No. Because he discovered that she didn't cut the sandwich in half. You know, when you go to Subway, they'll cut it in half. You'll watch them do it. So if you're not paying attention, that's not really on the girl. He was mad that it hadn't been sliced in two. Wouldn't you just hand it back? Hey, can you cut it real quick? You would think, you'd think that that's what would happen. Hey, listen, um, would you mind? You you had a whole sandwich, and I got no sandwich. Sandwich is on the floor. Yeah. They're not going to give you a refund. You you ruined your lunch. I don't understand what people are doing. They're they're just in a froth with anger, but at their own peril. Like, here's food you paid for. You throw it at them. So now they're going to call the cops. And now you're going to be more. You know what they call Bill when you're hungry and angry? Angry. (laughs) Angry. There's got to be a portmanteau of that. Somebody work on that. Mm. Figure out a word that means hungry and angry. And uh, please email me. So they call the cops. The guy walks and they find him. Because the girl, he threw the sandwich at her face. She took a picture of his license plate. He split on foot. No, I don't think that the the sandwich was seasoned yet. I mean, if it was done, it probably was. Ah, oh. uh, and so they put him in jail over a Subway sandwich. Maybe he was mad because he considered her a war criminal. After Doesn't that article, like that you don't th- th- think no, so? No, it sounds like he was. He's got his own thing, and he's just upset. And also, Guy like that, just, you think he'd have his own knife? And go, hey, just just cut this real quick, if you don't mind. Right. You forgot to cut it. Yes, please do that. Just throwing it back, jeez. Hmm. Psychos. And you got to say, over the long haul for Subway, as far as PR goes, is that better or worse than Jared? Is being put on Ukraine's war profiteer list, is that better um, or worse? Everything beats than, pedophilia. Yeah. So that's everything. You, everything beats pedophilia. So it's worse or it's better? It's better. Like, no one wants to be associated with a pedophile that you guys could have vetted and, hi- or like, and not hired. Yeah, but you don't. But, you don't but, know the state of affairs. But how you do you vet? How do you vet a person to find out if they don't have any 
a criminal record. How do Because people say this all the time, and companies have to contend with this. If somebody doesn't have a criminal record, how do you vet them to determine I, they're I, a pedophile? What I, if they just admit it openly? Oh, well, there. Yeah. Well, I'm just saying I understand what you're saying, but the public... It's going to look at it as, oh, well, that's one guy who you could have just fired and just erased. It's bad for PR. But you want to, as a corporation, you want to make money. You want to extend your business. So so what? You put it, you put your sub subways in another country. Like, that's not your fault. But your spokesperson turned out to be like a diddler. That, that Hey, I molest children. Well within your, your range there. Listen, I do I, something about that. I'll tell you what. I, I uh, the reason I ask, of course, is because when I vetted Pound Cake Bill, how could I have known? Uh, hey, I'm a less children. You, you wouldn't have known. Hey, people are actually letting us know that, that it's is hangry. A, that it's hangry. <laughs> oh wow! Oh, come on. <laughs> what? It's not. It's not a, a am, hungry. Oh. Hungry. He. Listen. Thank you. I do appreciate it. That means that you're listening. I was, of course, going for what I thought was comedic exaggeration but i appreciate it listen no harm no foul sometimes i genuinely can't uh, conjure a word uh if only there were a word that would combine not understanding the joke and texting <laughs> now, that would be great but uh listen i appreciate the effort no harm no foul there was a guy, and a woman on DoorDash, and this is another example of I wish people would let the situation play itself out first before they get their undies in a twist. This was on somebody's ring camera. There's a woman who's working for DoorDash and is bringing a woman her McDonald's. And the woman tries to tip her in cash. And the DoorDasher goes, uh, I... Basically telling her, I already left you a nasty note in your bag because I didn't see a tip on the app. Oh, my God. <laughs> Why don't well, you just wait for everything to conclude no, was... and then... Hello. Ignore. You keep that. Why? Because I didn't see a tip on the app and I put a little card in there. So please keep that. I'm sorry. No, I just had cash. Please take it's it. Okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Thank you. Have a good night. Hello. So you don't get any tip. Yeah. Bitch. Right? Because you're, well, not bib. It's just no, like, bitch. just wait for it when you give them the food and then you leave and then you find out. It's just she, she put a note in all caps. I didn't bother the food, but next time consider tipping your driver. Like, oh, thank you for not messing with my food. Just, you want to talk about not vetting people. People who work for DoorDash or people who work for... I don't know what kind of vetting there is. Do you have a car? Do you know how to operate the car? Do you know how to pick up food? Yes. You're in. It's not the end of the world with this woman. It's not like she punched her in the face, but, you know, she assumed that there was going to be no tip. And so she writes her this nasty, <laughs> all-caps post-it note in you there. get what you get. Hey, gah, gah, gah. I just wait. Wait till it's all done. Wait until the transaction is concluded. You played yourself, player. I just I don't even like that where it shows you the tip beforehand. The tip is supposed to be based off of service, anyways. Like so, I don't. I mean, you'd think I've never used it, so I I don't know. I, but I, to your point, you think never, Uber Eats doesn't do that. Like they, even even when you're driving with someone, it's like you can give a tip while you're driving, but they won't receive it until after you're out of the vehicle and like the car is pulled away. Will they receive the tip? Why, why would they do that? Because, I mean, I'm not tipping you beforehand. What if my food's cold? What if you took forever to get there? I can't tell you how many times people have, like, I've seen the car move, and then the road just dis disappears, and the car's <laughs> just sitting there. I'm like, damn. So, no, you're not getting a tip beforehand. Every second you're at a red light, my food is getting colder. Like, sorry, I stopped to get gas, or I hollered at my friend real quick to pick stopped up my dime bag. to get gas. You know, they all, there's always something, because I know, I, I know the route that they're taking, so I'm like, this dude just stopped at the gas station. He's eating some Fritos while I'm going to pick up my bag. Uh, but whatever. I only tip uh, yeah. a dollar per item anyway, so what do I know? I know. You're on record. I'm not Mr. Customer uh, Service. You're on record. And people in this audience 
have made their thoughts clear on that That's situation. Okay. I don't even you I haven't used it since. I have not used Uber Eats, DoorDash, any of them. Oh, you're trying to show them. I told you I'll go without. I'm not I'm not trying to offend anyone. If my measly pennies are not good enough, then I I won't use them. I I and I I can't afford to, clearly. Right. I thought I thought that that was the standard, like uh 2 or 3 dollars per item. In addition to ordering and the service fee, I was none the wiser, and I'll bow out. I don't need I don't need the overpriced food anyways. Well, to be fair, we were hearing feedback from a lot of people who do that job, so obviously it's in their best interest to get as much money as they can. I think it's in their best interest. But to, to your point, do you, the research you, you, of the route that they're on. Yeah, they thought that you were giving them a pittance. Well, it wasn't commensurate with their efforts. But to your point, if there's <laughs> Stopping to get gas or stopping to take a dump where they're just a blasting slim thug in I, the bathroom. I don't even care about that. Sometimes I'd be like, ooh, what are you listening to? There, I have heard some of the best music, the best playlists in Ubers sometimes. I'm like, it's the radio stations that I don't normally listen to. I'm like, oh, Daisy, what is this? He's like, oh, yeah, that's that, he's, that's that new, you know. Uh, that's that new, new. That's that new sexy red. I'm that's like, cake. oh, my gosh, she's raunchy. <laughs> <laughs> she tried to hide being pregnant, but it didn't work. Like, it, she's like, I love them hoes. I'm like, oh, my gosh, you is beaten. What you is should this? play that when you're driving in, see if they give you the head nod. I do play it. All right. Well, I didn't have a car for the, <laughs> I was taking a lot of Uber trips the last month and he's a half. He's walking and he's got an old school uh <laughs> Boom box on his shoulder. No, I got a uh, Walkman. Oh, mm-hmm. I want an old school Walkman. I got a head nod again today. For, what were you playing? Uh, Cody and Cambry. I think it was just a polite one, though. I don't think oh, it was music based. Oh, I wasn't based. music centric. Yeah. Okay. I think it actually might have been more for the car. Like, hey. Yeah, right? You you a lot you. of nods with that ride. Since you got your car and you think you're so cool. Mm hmm. Is that a six cylinder? Is there a V8? You, tell me what the, that means. It means one has six cylinders and the other and one, one has eight cylinders. One is a vegetable cylinders. juice. <laughs> <laughs> you bitch. No, Damn, I could have had a V8. <laughs> Splash. Uh-huh. It's walking all sideways. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'm going to break here. If you want to send me a text, 35192. If you're listening on.